Inspector General of Police Kayode Egbetokun for the first time has gathered Nigerian youth to discuss and have solution to majority of the problems that Nigerian youth are facing. And this is to celebrate 2024 Youth International Day. And it's now for the first time noted that the Inspector General of Police is engaging with the youth. A lot of questions have been asked by the youth to the Inspector General of Police and out of that is able to answer about 14 to 16 questions that were directly to him. Let's listen to the Inspector General of Police and how he answered the question directed to him by Nigerian youth across the country. Yeah, the person who asked this question stated that 
engagement will solve so many problems. And he asked, what are we going to engage the youth going forward? Very good question. What are we doing? One of this is what we are doing right now. The aim of this summit, organized by the Nigeria Police, in collaboration with UNESCO, is to have sincere engagement with the Nigerian youth. We want to build trust, and we want cooperation, collaboration with the Nigerian youth. Question three, that's the item seven question. <laughs> That question is meant for the first year. <laughs> you answer it properly. <laughs> question four. <laughs> the person who asked the question stated that, oh, it is just a suggestion. He suggested that we should have post protest dialogue in all the geopolitical zones. That is quite noted. We will consider it. Question five. What's about? Okay, the person who asked the question raised issues about insincerity about the protest that we call them faceless, even when they came out to address press conference. But before the protest, we made it clear that the police will be out to protest, to protect peaceful protesters. People who, are, who want to come out for peaceful protest will be out to protest, to protect them. We also gave our guidelines. We asked them to come forward. They should meet their commissioners of police, indicate their intention to stage a peaceful protest. And the commission of police in the state will make adequate arrangements for their protection. It is not enough for you to address press conference. What is required of you is to follow our guidelines. Meet the commission of police in your state, make your intention known, and the commission of police will make adequate arrangements for your protection. Do not inform us that you wanted to make a press conference. So next time, please endeavor to meet the Commissioner of Police. We have reasons why we insist that you must meet your Commissioner of Police and let him know the details of what you want to do. It is for your own personal protection. Because we have the intelligence we have, we don't know. If you are planning for peaceful protest, and we also know that some other groups want to take advantage of of your peaceful protest to cause violence, to unleash violence on the population. If you have come to discuss with your commissioner of police, you, he is in a very good position there to, I mean, to, to guide you. If we ask you to stay in a particular location for your peaceful protest, it is because we also know that some people will be coming out to unleash violence. That's why we insist that you should stay at a particular location if you know you have a peaceful protest that will make arrangements for your protection. But if you insist you must go on the streets with those people who want to stage violent protest, we won't be able to differentiate between the two groups. Six, what is police doing about insecurity to allow farmers to go back to the farm? Very good question. We are doing a lot. In the northeast, we have started farm patrol to give confidence back to farmers to return to farm. Mr. President is very, very concerned about it, and we are doing our best. But let me also add that the security landscape in Nigeria is complex and diverse, marked with a range of challenges requiring multi-dimensional responses. We have challenges in security. There is also economic challenges. There is political challenges. 
we have environmental challenges. All these challenges are interconnected. To solve these challenges, we need to understand their interconnectedness. You can solve one challenge and leave the others. It's not going to work. So we need to solve these challenges simultaneously. And that's why you see agencies of government, departments of government, working at the same time, working together. Solving these challenges simultaneously is not as easy as solving simultaneous equation. A lot is required. We need enormous resources. It requires focused leadership. And when I say focused leadership, I mean leadership at all levels. We don't start looking at leadership only at the center. We are all leaders at our own different levels. We must all be focused. It also requires committed citizens. Our citizens must show patriotism. Our citizens must show responsibility. We must embrace our duties and responsibilities to our country. We have responsibilities to obey the law. If we obey the law, there will be no corruption. We have responsibilities to cooperate with the police, assist law enforcement agencies. Let us embrace our responsibilities as citizens. So solving our challenges requires that all of us are involved. Question nine. What can the police do to engage secondary school students? Because secondary school, the secondary schools is becoming a fighter ground for courtism. Very good question. In the Nigerian police as of today, we have recently established a unit called Pukakov. Pukakov means police campaign against courtism and other vices. That unit is headed by a senior police officer. Our target is students in secondary school. So we are doing a lot to discourage courtism and we are starting at the level of the secondary school students. Question 10. What are we doing about bad eggs in the police? You said that a lot of bad eggs are in the police. I accept that we have bad eggs. But the bad eggs are everywhere. They are not only in the police. Whatever you see in Nigeria today, in the police today, is a reflection of what Nigeria is. It is called Nigeria Police Force, not Ghana Police Force, not Republic of Benin Police Force. Members of the force are from are Nigerians. So a society gets the kind of police it deserves. That notwithstanding, we are fishing out the bad eggs because we are responsible leaders. We are fishing out the bad eggs in our midst and we are punishing them. We are discouraging bad behavior. By punishing bad behavior, and we encourage good behavior by reinforcing those good behavior. Question 11. Efforts to protect those who, are, those who come out to protest and fight for better Nigeria. I think that's what I got from the lady who was, um, that's what I managed to get from the lady who was sobbing and, and talking at the same time. We have stated it severally that it is the right of citizens 
to have peaceful assembly and to protest. We recognize that right. And we will always protect the rights of our citizens. We have introduced a course in our police colleges and training schools on the protection and promotion of human rights. For you to become a policeman today, you must have gone through that course. We are focusing on protection of human rights. And, and that is why we always emphasize that we recognize your rights to peaceful assembly and to protest. But that right is right to peace. It is not right to violent protest. No same community, society, will tolerate violent protest in the name of a riot. Twelve, use of volunteers in community policing. We're already doing that. A few years ago, the federal government approved community policing strategies for Nigeria. And the approach in that community policing strategy is to also engage special constabulary. These special constabulary are volunteers. We embrace volunteers. All our DPOs, our area commanders, have been tasked to make use of volunteers in their different areas. The vigilante groups are also volunteers. We work with all of them. We work with all stakeholders. So the, the volunteers have a place in our policing strategies in Nigeria. 13. The question 13, that was the question from the representative of Ohaneze. You stated that Igbos have been threatened to leave their communities each time there is crisis in Nigeria. Well, that may be true in some cases, in some places, but I think it's not a general thing. Like in my own community, we have a lot of Igbos. We have mixed tribe in my community. And any time there is crisis, nobody tells any tribe to leave. And I know that that is general in Nigeria. But in few cases where you have that, um, I will advise that you report to the, to the authorities concerned. Question 14, which is the last question on standardizing our information sharing. That is basic. We have a standard in um, sharing information. We share information on the need to know basis. We share with all agencies who should know about whatever information that we have. Time. Thank you. From Nigerian Police Force 2024 Youth Summit, I'm Bemiga Olamika, reporting for GTV Africa.